Hey everybody, this is example number two for structural analysis of slope, slopes and deflections for beams using the virtual work method. The problem statement that we have is we're asked to find the slope at joint B for the cantilevered steel beam using the virtual work method. And the moment of inertia, I, is equal to 50 times 10 to the 6 millimeters to the fourth power. And Young's modulus is equal to 200 gigapascals. So here's our cantilever beam, and we have a concentrated load at, at joint A at the free end, point A, equal to 5 kilonewtons, which we'll call P. And the total length is equal to 5 meters plus 5 meters, that's 10 meters, and we'll call that L. And we need to find the slope at the midpoint, B. So before we proceed to the solution, I just want to let you guys know that this example is brought to you by Bentley. Bentley Systems is a software development company that supports the professional needs of engineers, designers, planners, and contractors responsible for creating and managing infrastructure. Bentley has tailored software applications for design, modeling, and analysis of buildings, structures, bridges, plants, and more. And I have used Bentley's software, and I can say that the software was very easy to use, and the support that came with it was impeccable. Whenever I needed help, the Bentley team was there for me. And here's their website. It's Bentley.com. There's a link to Bentley.com and some of their YouTube channels within the description part of this video. So if you're a student and want to get familiar with the software and get a leg up over your colleagues during your job search, Academic licensing is available through Bentley, and if you're a practicing engineer and you want to sharpen up your skills, they have a bunch of videos and webinars on their website as well as their various YouTube channels, so please check them out. And now coming back to our beam problem, the first thing we have to do is establish uh, coordinate systems. And so we have to establish appropriate coordinate systems that are valid within regions of the beam where there is no discontinuity of real or virtual loads. So for our, this is a real loading case, and there is no discontinuity in the real loading case. But as you'll see as we move on, there will be a discontinuity when we're trying to apply a virtual unit load. And we're going to be applying a virtual, uh, virtual unit couple. And that unit couple is going to be placed at the point where we're trying to find the slope, which is at B which is at joint B. So it's going to be here. So since that's going to be a discontinuous loading in the middle of this beam, we need to create, a, we need to create two separate coordinate systems. So here, here's the coordinate system that we've chosen. One going from lo, uh, the free end A going to the right X, X1, and one going from location B going to the right X2. So now that we've have, we have our coordinate systems established, we have to get the real moment function for each coordinate system. So here's our cantilever beam with a concentrated load. So we're going to take a cut at location D, which is between joint A and B, and then we're going to take a cut at location E, at location e which is between point B and C. So let's take a look at the first cut at location D. So here's what we have at, when we took the sectional cut at location D. Then we're going to take the moment about location D and we see that the internal bending moment, internal bending moment, M sub 1, plus uh, P, which is a concentrated load, times X1. So the internal bending moment is equal to negative PX1. And then now we'll take a look at the cut that we took at the second cut location at location E. So again, here's what we have. This is location E. We have an internal bending moment. We call it M sub 2, M2. And now we're going to take, again, we're going to take the moment about the cut location. So about location E. So we have M2 plus P, which is a concentrated loading, times a moment arm here. And the moment arm is equal to L divided by 2 plus 
x2. So the internal bending moment, m2, is equal to negative p times L over 2 plus x2. Now the next step will be to apply a virtual unit load uh, and then get the virtual moment function. And so this virtual unit load should actually be unit couple. Okay? So let's take a look at our cantilever beam. So we're going to place a unit couple uh, at the point and in the direction of the desired displacement. And with this virtual unit couple in place and all the real loads removed from the beam, we're going to calculate the internal virtual moment as a function of each coordinate system. So here is our virtual unit couple, 1 kilonewton meters, and it's applied at the location of interest, which is joint B. And so now we're going to take cuts again. We're going to take sectional cuts like we did previously at location D and E. And we're going to get the virtual moment functions for each coordinate system. So let's consider locate the first cut at location D. So we're going to take the moment about D and we find that the internal moment function, the virtual moment function is equal to zero. Now we take a look at the second cut that we take at location E and we take moment about that location and we find that the internal uh, moment function is equal to 1, 1 kilonewton meters. And now we can apply the virtual work equation and solve for the, solve for the displace, displacement slash slope. So we're looking for slope. So we're looking for the slope at location B. So here's our virtual work equation. It's equal to 1 times theta, theta B equals to the integration of small m times capital M, uh, capital M divided by EI. So 1 is a virtual unit couple, virtual unit couple. Theta B is a slope we're trying to find at location B. So this is our unknown. And then lowercase m is a virtual moment function. Capital M is a real moment function. And then EI is just Young's modulus times moment of inertia. So since we have two coordinate systems, we have to divide this integration up into two, two integrations, one from 0 to L over 2, and then the other one from L over 2 to L. So this is from A to B, we can say. And then the second integration is from B to C. So now let's take a look at the terms within the integral. Uh, the virtual moment function for, from A to B was 0. So automatically, this whole integral will be 0. So we can cancel this out. So what we're left with is the integration from B to C. So we have the virtual moment function was 1. And then the real moment function is negative P times L over 2 plus x2. So this is what we have. And then we move, we move the 1 over EI. We move the EI outside because it's constant. So we're left with 1 over EI times an int integration of 0 to 5, and then negative P times L over 2 plus x2, and then dx2. And it's going to be the integration is from 0 to 5, not 5 to 10, because the coordinate system starts from B. So the coordinate system, x2, See here, it starts from location B. So this is point zero, and this is five here from B to C. So we just simplify and we integrate. And after the integration, we get negative PLX2 over 2 minus PX2 squared divided by 2. And the limits of our integration are from zero to five. And we just plug in the numbers for, we just integrate and we plug in the limits. And we get that 1 over EI times negative 5 PL over 2 minus 25 P divided by 2. And then we plug in the numbers for the load, for load P and the length L. And we get 
is equal to the slope is equal to negative 187.5 kilonewton squared meters cubed divided by EI. And now we can actually plug in the uh, plug in the values for the Young's modulus and the moment of inertia, and we get that the moment. Then we get that the slope at the location is equal to negative 0 0.01875 radians. So, if the if the algebraic sum of the of the integrals was positive, that would tell us that the slope or displacement was in the same direction as a virtual unit load or couple. But since this is in the negative direction, this is telling us that the slope, the virtual unit couple that, we have, that we've applied, the actual slope is opposite to this direction. So this is the end of this example. Please subscribe to the channel and check out our website. It's engineeringexamples.net. And also like the Facebook page. It's facebook.com slash engineeringexamples. Thanks.